It's getting dark, too dark to see Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another Guitars Ready Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to play Knockin' on Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan, which is a really great song, super beginner friendly as well. For the basics, we'll just need our guitar and stand in tuning and we won't require a capo. Now if you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarsreadyhero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Finally, this video simply teaches you one song, but if really understanding and learning the guitar is something you've always wanted to do, but you didn't know where to start, then be sure to check out the Guitars Ready Hero Premium course and membership, which gives you all the guidance to play with confidence. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So let's get stuck into the main chord progression of this song, which is used throughout the entire song. So once you learn this chord progression, that's it. So there's two lines of chords. We're gonna start with the G chord. Now I'm gonna play this with a four finger G chord like this. So middle finger on the third fret of the sixth string, index on the second fret of the fifth string, and ring in pinky fingers on the third fret of the second and first string. Now the reason why I use the four finger G chord is because it makes our transition to the next chord a lot simpler. You can of course use the three finger G chord variations if those are more comfortable for you, but I'm using the four finger G chord. Our next chord is the D. So from our G, all we need to do is pivot around our ring finger. Keep that ring finger where it is and move your index and middle finger to the second frets of the third and first string. We just want to strum from the fourth string onwards with a D chord. Those are the notes that we want to target. If you happen to hit the open fifth string, that's okay, but we definitely don't want to hit the open sixth string. That sounds quite ugly. Now, to avoid that sixth string, we can use our fretting hand thumb as insurance. With your fretting hand thumb, just lightly touch the sixth string. That way, if you happen to accidentally hit the sixth string when you're strumming, it will be muted and it won't ring out. Again, it's okay to hit the fifth string because that A note is technically within a D major chord, but ideally you want the lowest note to be the fourth string there. Now with the G and the D, we're gonna play each of those chords with the strumming pattern that goes like this. Down, 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 up. It's a 16th note strumming pattern. One E and a two E and a. So once each for the G and the D, The next chord is an A minor, so middle and ring finger on the second frets of the fourth and third string, and index finger on the first fret of the second string. With the A minor, we're strumming from the fifth string onwards. Now again, we don't want the open sixth string ringing out, so again, you can use your thumb as an insurance policy to just lightly touch the sixth string so that it doesn't ring out. Now with that A minor, it's held out for twice as long as the G and the D, so an easy way to do this is to just play that one strumming pattern twice for the A minor. I'll show you a variation for that strumming pattern later in the video, but for now this is what the first line of chords will sound like. Now the second line of chords is identical, except instead of an A minor, we're gonna play a C major chord. So the second line of chords. Now I have a couple of tips when it comes to chord transitions. Now for the G to the D, that's easy enough because we're just pivoting around our ring finger. So there's not a whole lot of movement when it comes to going from the G to the D. However, from the D to the A minor or the D to the C, we have to lift all of our fingers. So on the very final up strum of the D chord, it's perfectly acceptable to start lifting your fingers, hit open strings in order to get your fingers into the next chord. So on that first down strum of the new chord, you could be ready to go. And you can do the same when going from the A minor or the C back to the G. On the very final up strum of that chord, you can lift your fingers so it gives you that tiny amount of time 
to get to your next chord. Of course, as you get better and better with your chord transitions, that open string gap will be less noticeable and you'll be able to get to your second chord quicker. Let me demonstrate this in slow motion. Lift. 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 Notice how at no point am I stopping my strumming hand. My strumming hand keeps consistently moving and that's really important when it comes to learning the guitar and strumming in general is that we don't want to stop and start in between chords. That will develop a bad habit. You want to keep your motor running. That's the most basic way of playing it, but let's add a strumming pattern variation to the third chord in each bar to make it sound a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more lively. So with the A minor C, instead of just down, 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 up, played twice, what we can do is a strumming pattern like this. And it's a 16th note strumming pattern covering a full bar of music. And I'll go down, 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 up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And we can apply that to the A minor and the C, and the main chord progression could sound like this. Now we could go one step further as well and if you want to change things up and add another variation what we could do is actually remove a couple of the down strums from that strumming pattern notice that we're just playing within the 16th note framework here that you see below i could throw in all the strums here at 16th notes which will be which would be one and a two and a three and a four and a or i could remove some which would make things a bit more interesting. Down, 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 up, 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 down, up. So that's what we're gonna try with this third variation for the A minor and the C. And that would sound like this. So those are some alternative strumming patterns that you can try. I'm going to be using the second one I taught you at the playthrough at the end of this lesson, but I do encourage you to feel it and improvise those strumming patterns yourself. As long as you're fitting within that 16th note framework, then it should sound okay. That's everything you need to know for Knocking on Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan. So now I'll be doing a full playthrough of the song and I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerodihero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.